We had a chance to catch up backstage a few minutes ago. We haven't seen each other since WrestleMania last year. What's it feel like to be back in Phoenix? How long has it been since you've been here? Man, I think one of the last times was when, when we did the Nitros. and Really? Yeah, that's what Hulk and Jimmy said, stuff. too. I, I mean, honestly, I think that's one of the last times for me. So. Wow. Oh, TNA. Okay. Did TNA? No disrespect, but okay. Did yeah. TNA come here? I, apparently, we did. <laughs> Bound for glory. Bound for glory. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how that got by me. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your WrestleMania experience last year. I mean, that had to be... The one last year? Yeah, I mean, just the whole vibe to it. Is such a, for me, it was the first one that I'd really been to in a long time, and it was just it was overwhelming how big it was and, and how much was going on. Yeah, for me, it was just it was two in a row, except for this time I didn't have to perform or you know, wrestle, do anything like that. I was doing appearances and stuff, but um, you know, it's, it's a spectacle no matter where you go, no matter what city. Um, it's huge. WrestleMania is what it is. It's the biggest and the best. And uh, you know, just to be carted around you know, from place to place, building to building, um, with stuff to do every single minute, it seems like. There's, there's just, I mean, from press to interviews and newspaper and everything else, it's, it's pretty nonstop. Now, that was last year. The year before, you obviously were in the ring. What was that like for you? Because it, it had to be, I can only imagine, that had to be really overwhelming. It, it was in a lot of ways. It was uh, surreal, you know, to think that I was actually in a WWE ring at WrestleMania, you know. Uh, that, was, that was huge. And, of course, to be outdoors at Levi Stadium, all those people, Huge, you know, and uh, I always talk about Stephanie McMahon before I walked out. She said, Sting, just take it all in, you know, <laughs> and that's what I did. I just took it all in. Cool. Well, before we go uh, any longer, I know the fans have a bunch of questions here, and I want to talk to you more about your WrestleMania experiences, as well as how and where you began. And, and all these years that I've known you, I've never sat down and had that conversation with, with you about when you started in wrestling and why. So we'll get to that. But in the meantime, why don't we uh, kick it off with some questions. If I can see where they are. They're lining up here. It's like I'm seeing triple here, but these are all Sting fans dressed like Sting. So I don't need new glasses. Sting, what made you move from California to Texas? Wow, I've never been asked that one before. It's pretty nosy, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, you, you know what? Uh, divorce is pro probably one of the biggest reasons, but there's a whole complex story behind the whole deal, and uh, ended up being kind of like my getaway, my hideaway, you know, the man cave place, and it was a lot easier for me to travel in and out of Dallas, Texas, uh, than California. F flying from L.A. across the country to the east, to the northeast, or to Florida, sucked. So... Living in Dallas makes it so much easier. Okay, one more question. Um, what made you retire all of a sudden from the ho during the ho Hall of Fame in the WWE? You know, you say all of a sudden like you were in my mind or something. It, it was sudden because I didn't know for sure if I was going to make any kind of announcement until I actually did it at, at Hall of Fame. I mean, I was wavering. I was kind of back and forth on it. But, you know, I, um, I got hurt. You know, wrestling Seth and, you know, the neurosurgeons and everybody saying that I needed surgery and that I had trouble, um, you know, cervical spinal stenosis or whatever they call it, two areas in my neck that are really messed up bad. Although I don't have any pain, no side effects, nothing like that. But, you know, one more bad fall and it's, it's not going to be good for me. So okay, I just you. thought enough is enough. Okay, thank you. I think I'm a big fan. No, I've been, I just wanted to ask you a question. If you were to fight anybody, like if you made a return, who would it be? I like that, man. You should see. If you can't see him, he's like, if you were going to fight, who would it be? <laughs> um, well, I'll give you one guess. Shh, let him guess. Who do you think? Undertaker. <laughs> Braun Strowman. <laughs> Undertaker. Well, I guess Undertaker then. <laughs> Don't sound so disappointed. <laughs> That'd be a hell of a match, kid. <laughs> yep, Undertaker it is. Thanks for that question, buddy. Uh, uh, speaking of the Undertaker, uh, do you 
Watch out for this guy. He's tricky. He was here earlier. <laughs> uh, do you uh, regret not jumping to uh, WWE sooner so we could have possibly had the dream match that everybody wants? <laughs> that, that's Eric Bischoff's fault. <laughs> he kept me with WCW all those years. It's because of him, so ask him. I'm, I'm kidding. I, I, I won't do that. Do I regret not leaving earlier? Um, you know... <sighs> That, that's a, it's actually a good question, but a tough one to answer. It's, on one side, it's easy to say, yeah, I wish I would have gone earlier. But on the other hand, I, I really don't have any regrets. Um, you know, the Monday Night Wars and all that, I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm glad that I was a part of that and the, and the way it all played out. And so are we. <laughs> Thank you. But I think, you know, if I can add a little bit to that, it's easy, you know, at this stage of our lives to look back and say, wow, what if I would have done this or what if I would have done that? It, it's a very easy thing to do, and I think it's a natural thing to do. As a wrestling fan, I will tell you, forget about the fact that we worked together and I was running the company for a while. Um, Sting had the opportunity to be a part. You know, Sting was in WCW before I got there when it was a struggling little company that was fighting for any kind of recognition, and it was a distant number two to WWF. And Sting was also there when we were kicking WWE's butt. And... That, that was a great time to be in WCW, and I think the fact that you were there when they were down and struggling and trying to get recognition and then to finally get it, that was a fun ride to be on. But I think if, oh, yeah. if you could manage it perfectly, you know, with 2020 hindsight, maybe to jump off that train right after that, you know, Nitro ride and, and jump into WWE and have those opportunities would be the, the perfect career, but we're, none of us are blessed with 2020 hindsight, so... Right. We do the best we can with what we got, and no regrets. Thank you. Hello, Sting. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to be that one guy, and I'm going to ask this question. It's Arcade 97. Um, there's a lot of talk leading up to that match that you described. It didn't live up to the hype. I mean, I was nine years old when that happened, and I thought it did, but you guys talk like it, it didn't fulfill your needs, so to speak. Well, what happened? I think that the build-up was enormous. Obviously, it was. I mean, it did change WCW, changed the entire company, I believe. Um, there were so many good things that happened along the way, and the build-up was, I mean, as good as it can possibly get. And, you know, you, you at the end of that, you have to deliver something that is awesome, something that will match what the build-up was. And I don't think Hulk or Eric or anyone else would disagree. It, it just did not accomplish that, in my opinion. And, and that's what my opinion is to this day. Thank you for that, and thank you for all you've done and being my favorite professional wrestler. Thank you for watching. Thanks for that good question, man. Hi. Um, if you could go back and wrestle anyone from the Attitude Era in WWE during the 90s, who would it be? Shawn Michaels. That would be amazing. Yeah, Shawn, I mean, Shawn's the best. It's impossible for him to have a bad match. Every match I've ever seen him in, especially the big ones, the Mania matches, and I mean, just the best of the best, and I would love to have been able to wrestle him one time. Thank you very much. You guys are legends. It's an honor to be in the same room as you. Um, it, what, was there anything planned for you after the Seth match if it hadn't gone down the way it had? And does a part of you resent Seth in any way for the buckle bomb or anything like that? So um, I don't want I, you to bury him. But, yeah. yeah. No, there, there was nothing planned, at least not, not that I'm aware of. I was kind of doing one-offs the whole way through. And, uh, you know, as far as the buckle bump, it, it was not Seth. I've been outspoken about that. I mean, so outspoken about it. He had a lot of bad press over that move, yeah. and I don't understand. I mean, it, 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 it was not him. It was me. Thank you. Promise. What's going on, guys? What's up, dude, man? <laughs> so, was there, was there or is there any plans for you and The Undertaker? Was there and are there? Both. Both. <laughs> um, no, I don't think that there ever was. I always, it's always been a desire of mine. Um, but there was one time I think we were really close to making that happen, but it, 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 there was already something in the works okay. uh, with uh, Brock and Taker at that particular time. Yeah. So... You know. And one more thing, I love the TNA Joker sting. That was my favorite sting of all time. And Eric, you're the best. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I like that stinger, too. That was fun. 
I, that, that was actually a fun time with TNA and the Joker character. I mean, I had so much fun doing that. It's funny, in the United States, a lot of people don't really like that Joker thing. No, just be the crow, man. <laughs> You know, or Wolfpack, but you go to Europe and they love it over there. Yeah, so. I, I liked it because it was another dimension of your character yeah. and it brought out a little bit more, um, you had a little more fun with it. I did know? have fun doing it, that. Yeah. It, was a, it was a risk, another risk yeah. to take, but I think it was good. Hogan was good in that too. He was. Yeah. Hi, Sting. Hi, Eric. How are you guys doing? Good. Um, my question is, well, during 96, 97, you did a lot of theatrics that I loved, coming down from the Raptors, Sting Army, coming up from the, you know, from the mat. Um, was that, were, were there any of those, like, scared or tough to do, especially coming down? And, and coupled with that, was it kind of tough not to wrestle during that time? Because you didn't have, like, a match for a long time until Starcade. Um, it wasn't tough to not be a human Super Bowl every night of the week. <laughs> I actually was kind of recovering physically, so that was good. And man, there are a lot of stories I could tell about some of the repels. You think I should do that? <laughs> I mean, some of them are pretty. Yes. Some of them are very, very intense. Um, I mean, it, it, I, I was scared every single time I did it. And um, as a matter of fact, the first time we did it, at the United Center in Chicago, um, I was. I mean, it was because of this man again, right here, that I actually did it. Because I came in, I tried four attempts in the practice runs earlier in the day, and you know, I was spinning the whole way down and getting dizzy. And you know, last thing I want to do is to get dizzy and fall over like a drunk in front of everybody, uh, because it would have been the end of that character. And I came back into the uh, dressing room area, and I said, "You remember this?" I said, "I said I'm not doing it." <laughs> he goes, "What do you mean you're not doing it? You, you've you've got to do this." I mean, you were. He was very persistent, you know, and I. Persuasive. Yeah, per persuasive, yes, yeah. And, um, and, you know, the stunt guy that we were working with, he was, he was there and trying to talk me into it. He says, just, just if you just go down faster, it'll work. So the fifth time I did it was live in front of all of you. And, and uh, you know, I came down so fast, I had second-degree burns on all my fingers, on my hands coming down. I had two sets of gloves on. You know, I was walking down the aisle like this with a stone face. And on the inside, I was going, oh, oh, my fingers are burning, man. I'm burning. This sucks. But it was good. Ellis Edwards was the stunt coordinator for yeah, us. Ellis. And Ellis is still with WWE to this day. So uh, he knew his stuff, but he was, uh, he, was, he was a little frenetic. He was one of those really super high energy guys, you know, and he was always really positive everything was going to work even when it didn't. So I can understand how that'd be a little nerve wracking. Cool. Thank you. First off, it's an honor to meet you, Sting, one of the best wrestlers in the industry. Um, Thank you. My question is, let's say you're in an alternate reality, who would you wrestle against? An alien, a predator, or a horror movie character? Well, last time it was a sea monster. Where did the sea monster go? <laughs> I gotta change it up, man. Uh, okay. Okay, what are my choices again? A alien, a predator, or a horror movie character? Man, alien, Sigourney Weaver, love that movie. Predator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, love that too. Um... Boy, that's a tough one. I don't know. I, if, I were, I, if I were your manager, I would probably try to convince you to go after a predator because you've been in the wrestling business for a long time, and most promoters are pretty much like predators, so <laughs> it'll be a natural for you. That's true, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not very creative with that kind of stuff. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. First off, I want to say it's an honor to be here right now. But my question would be, Stan, you have just such an amazing look, and it's changed so much over the years. Is there a look that you would like want to revisit or go back to or wish you had more time with? Or wish I had the ability to do? <laughs> Surfer Sting, you know? There, there are so many people that, that, that would love to see that Surfer Sting you know, character come back, but can't, can't pull that off anymore. <laughs> Good. Now, this guy's really serious. He's just so serious. I hope he lightens it up this time, but he's, he's got that damn bad. It just makes me nervous. All right. So, real question. I told you. Good voice, too. Thank you. What is it like being a, and this is a real question, being a born-again Christian? What is it like being a born-again Christian? Amen. It is um, awesome to be a born-again Christian. It is not always easy to be a born-again Christian, uh, especially in the, in the entertainment industry, but it's the best choice that I ever made in my life, 
Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. He became my Lord and Savior <laughs> in August of 1998, and I have not looked back since that day, and nor will I. The Bible says, don't worry, this is all the preaching that I will do, but he says, deny me before men, and I will deny you before my Father. So in front of this crowd here in Phoenix, I will not deny Jesus as being my Lord and Savior. Okay, one more. Does this mark 20 years being born again Christian? This coming August will be 20 years. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Sting. Yes. It almost sounded like uh, Oli, um, um, the one I'm always teased about now. Why did it escape me? Oli's voice. Yeah, the black scorpion. Sting. Yeah. If you can go back at that WrestleMania 31 and change everything, who who will be your one dream match at WrestleMania? Um, my dream match at WrestleMania is Undertaker, if that answers the question. But you said WrestleMania 31? Uh, don't, don't mind that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he changed questions in the middle. Well, yeah, I mean, I, my, my dream match for, you know, more than a decade, probably two decades, was to be able to have a good match against Taker. Always wanted to have that. What? <laughs> Sounds so Good. easy, doesn't it? Right, doesn't yeah. It sounds so easy. Too sweet. Too sweet. Sting. Um, who is your toughest opponent? I think one of the toughest opponents that I had in the early day was uh, Leon White, Big Van Vader. And later years, probably Kurt Angle, you know? I always say that, uh, you know, they call him the machine, and he is a machine. He just, he just does not stop, and he's pretty relentless and very physical. So you got to be, at the, you know, the top of your game to wrestle Kurt. And he's a bit of a perfectionist, too, isn't he? He demands oh, he, a lot of himself. He, sure, he demands a lot of everybody around him, yes. And I think that's one of the, he's one a perfectionist. Of the reasons. That it, and even a guy like Undertaker, who has been around, you know, you, we as fans, we see the physical part of the match, and we all can appreciate you know, how difficult that must be, but to be in the ring and, and to be living up to not only your, your own personal expectations, but to live up to the expectations of your opponent is probably even more pressure. Would you right. agree? With somebody like Kurt? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Good question, my friend. Thing. Um, how long does it take to get your face paint on? This is a new kind of a paint. It's different than the paint that you saw me, you know, paint with all those years. I used uh, uh, something from Liquitex. It was, it was um, acrylic paint. And acrylic paint is not made for your skin. It's made for the canvas for artists. So this is a newer paint. It's actually made for my skin, but it's really, really hard to use for some reason. So sometimes I feel like a little kid, you know, who's just learning how to draw did this, you know. So if it looks kind of bad, yeah, that's why. But it takes about a half an hour. This might be a funny That scares question. me right there. <laughs> that really scares me. I didn't hear that. Yes, young man? So, this might be a funny question, but in a movie and with you in it, what superhero would you want to be with? What superhero would I want to be with? Yeah, in a movie. Yeah, what it, maybe the crow. I don't know. <laughs> I think the, the crow would be kind of a cool deal. I've always loved Batman, though, you know? Yeah. Thank you. You got it. Hi, my name's Dylan. I'm, uh, I wanted to talk to you because, like, with people like AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, like, obviously not starting in WWE, coming out, like, from Japan and others, is there anyone outside of WWE that you see has, like, major talent, like, such as Kenny Omega, Marty Skrull, people like that? Do you have even, like, seen people with, like, much more talent? You know, I'm so sorry that I am pretty much out of the loop on some of the new guys coming up, so I, I don't have a good answer for you on that. Oh, sorry. I love you so much. You're, you're a great wrestler. You're, you've inspired me so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Sting. You're my favorite wrestler of all time. Bleach Bomb Boy all the way. Thank um, you. 
What was your favorite match of all time besides Ric Flair? Besides Ric Flair? Man, uh, you know, I, honestly, that one and only WrestleMania match that I had, you know, the fact that it was WrestleMania, the fact that it was Triple H, the fact that you had all the DX out there, the fact that you had the NWO out there, I mean, Hogan, Hall, Nash, I mean, it, it, to me, that was nostalgic. That was kind of like everything finally coming full circle, everything culminating all in one night, in one match. And um, it was just a great moment, a great night, a great memory, and um, I got to put that up there. Thank you, Sting. God yep. bless you. God bless you. First off, Eric Bischoff, thank you for all the creativity you did in the 90s. So I wanted to thank you. You're up there. Thank you. Sting, you're the greatest wrestler I've ever seen in my life. You're the greatest. Uh, my question is, the final night of Nitro, that last match with Ric Flair, when it was all over and said and done for, what were your emotions? What was going through your body, through your mind? What were you feeling at that last moment? I hate to wear the, the surreal word out tonight, but uh, it's the word I always use. It, 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 was like, it was like the enemy came in <laughs> and stole all the women and children and took them all off, and uh, we were all going to be killed, you know? Um, it, just, it just felt like we were violated. Um, it, it was like, is this really, really happening? I mean, we, we, we were number two for a long time, years, and we finally made it to number one, and then we made it to number one globally. I mean, we were, we were it. And to see it all being flushed you know, down the toilet was, I couldn't believe it. You know, uh, all those years that I was talking about being a second-class citizen, and now I get to be a first-class citizen, and, you know, WCW's number one, and Money Nitro, and we were breaking attendance records all over the country, and buy, pay-per-view uh, buy rates were being broken left and right, video game sales like never before. Um, I mean, it was, I mean, I couldn't believe it was happening. And then, for me, you know, I just kind of disappeared with my tail between my legs after all those years, and it, it just sucked, to be honest with you. Thank you. Again, you're the greatest, and it, it's been an honor. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Dean, how are you? I'm, I'm great. So I got a couple of questions. We'll start with this. Hall of Fame 2016, what was it like walking in there and pretty much knowing you were halfway there saying you wanted to retire? It's nerve-wracking for me to... You know, I've never been known as the, the mic guy, you know, never been known to be good on the microphone. So for me to come and speak to a crowd like this, um, you know, and, and try to talk about my career and, and try to be interesting and relevant and all this kind of stuff and maybe even entertaining at the same time, it, it's nerve wracking. It was very nerve wracking for me. And um, all at the same time, juggling, oh, am I really going to do this? You know, um, I was, I was pretty nervous. It's amazing, though, that the moment I opened my mouth, it all went away. It's almost like going into the ring. Well, you, know, you, you get nervous going through the curtain, but as soon as you get through the curtain and lock up with your opponent, it's, you know, it all goes away. So it was good. WCW, final night. I was there in Panama City, Beach, Beach Florida. Watched you and Flair wrestle. By the way, I respected you both for that night, showing up and doing the final show. Thank you. And thank you for all the good years. You gave me a lot of things to look up to as a child. I've, I've looked up to you since I was seven. Easy. It always means a lot. Thank you. The you words bet. don't bounce off of me. I, I, I mean, it means a lot. It's humbling. Thank you. Thing when you... What? Sorry. Uh, but did you like it when you beat up Triple H at Survivor Series? <laughs> It felt really good. I bet it did. <laughs> it felt good for me, and I was watching it. <laughs> no, it did. It felt good. I mean, it felt real good. <laughs> that that of was, you know was super was. cool that I get to like, see you, but I'm probably going to brag to my friends that I see you. What's your name? Max. Max. All right. Maximus. I'm going to brag to my friends that I got to meet Maximus tonight. All right. How old were you when you wanted to uh, be a professional wrestler? 
Good question. Yeah, I was. I was. Um, I started later than most. Um, I didn't even know what pro wrestling was growing up in the area of Southern California that I was in. The area that I was, I grew up in. We didn't have wrestling on TV, so I didn't even know what it was until Hulk Hogan came into my gym, a Gold's gym that I was managing and I co-owned, and everybody'd freak out and say, "Oh, don't you see? Don't you know who that is?" I go, "I don't know who it is. That's Hulk Hogan." You know. The guy from the Rocky movie. Oh, okay. Well, I know the guy from the Rocky movie, but I didn't know anything about pro wrestling. And it was right around the age of 25 when Hulk was coming in with his 21-inch pythons into the gym working out and freaking people out that um, I was approached by somebody who wanted me to uh, break into pro wrestling with a group of three others, and we ended up doing it. And I started out with uh, Jim Helwig, who later became the Ultimate Warrior. We were a tag team. That's the way I started. <laughs> Hi, Sting. Nice to meet you. Um, my question is, who was your favorite opponent to work with the most when you wrestled? It's going to have to be Ric Flair. Um, I wrestled Rick so many times, and I give Rick all the credit for teaching me so much in the first 12 months of working with him. Uh, he put me on the map at the Clash of Champions, March of 1988, in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and I'll never forget that night. And um, you know, he didn't have to treat me the way he did in the ring, but he did. He treated me well, taught me well, and I really had so much fun working with him over the years. I just think the chemistry between the two of us was just always good. Thank you. What was that chuckle about? <laughs> I said the chemistry was good, so he we went, <laughs> Okay. So what made you pick a black bat, or was that forced on you, and would you have chose something else? It wasn't forced on me. I mean, Jim Duggan had a two by four, and you know there were guys running around with I saw maybe one bat with barbed wire around it, and you know tables. Those I mean chairs. Everybody had some kind of kendo stick or whatever. I thought you know no one's ever done the baseball bat thing, and I always forget the the Warrior movie from you know years ago. You know the 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 Warriors come out to play. Yeah, yeah. You know, the guys with the painted faces, I went, ooh, that's cool. So I kind of took a little bit from them, too. Thank you. Thing, if you could go back to the original WWF, back when, you know, Hulk and Macho Man and Andre the Giant and all of them, who would you wrestle against from that era? Good question. You know... Back when I got started, didn't know any, what wrestling was, and I was approached by that, that person with this other group. We, we ended up going to the sports arena in Los Angeles, and I saw Hulk Hogan, the f first wrestling match ever. Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Big John Studd, the British Bulldogs, and Adrian Adonis. That's a name that people don't really bring up much anymore, but he, he really impressed me that night. Some of the moves and things that he did and his uh, timing. Um, you know, possibly Adrian Adonis, somebody like that. I always enjoyed working with the Giants, too. So, you know, Big John Studd and Andre would have been great, for sure. So, now, second part of that question. Tag team, who would it be your partner? From that same era? Yeah. Hmm, man, I did get to tag with Davey Boy for a long time, or a few times. Um, man. Macho Man. Ah, yeah. I was hoping you'd say that. Macho Man. Yeah, I, I mean, how could I forget Macho Man, right? And Mach is, he's, he's one of the guys that really I, I looked at a lot in the beginning and tried to develop my own character, and he was so, he was so out there with his character. I, I loved him, you know? And I loved his work in the ring. And he was, you know, we talked about it a little while ago about guys that put a lot of pressure on themselves. Macho Man really demanded a lot out of himself. He was the perfectionist perfectionist. Thank you, and thank you for coming out. Thank you. Think, what was your, wait, who was your toughest opponent? Well, I'm just going to go with the same answer I gave about 10 minutes ago. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to say Kurt Angle was one of the toughest opponents that I ever had. Very physical wrestler. Is that good, cutie? Yes. Okay. Hey, Sting, how's it going? All good. Uh, what was it like wrestling with the Ultimate Warrior, and what was the evolution of your relationship afterward? Um, it was very intense, lots of turmoil all those years wrestling with uh, you know Warrior. We were 
I mean, both of us were just, you know, the hormones were off the scale and, you know, we were, you know, and so competitive. And even though we were a tag team, we were competing against each other. And, um, you know, the young guys, we were green. We couldn't, we couldn't hold a job anywhere at first. And we just couldn't, you know, we couldn't work this thing out. I mean, we had to learn how to wrestle somehow. And uh, so it was very tense. Lots of good times, bad times, lots of very ugly times as well. We, we almost split off several times until we finally, we did split off. He went to a world class and I ended up uh, going off with uh, Bill Watts, staying with Bill Watts or going to Bill Watts. That's what it was. It was with uh, Jerry Jarrett originally. And then, you know, how, what evolved after that, we just, when we split ways, we split ways. And, you know, I'd see him every two, three years. I'd bump into him somewhere and friendly, hugs. Hey, man, miss you. Hope all's good. You're doing great. Congratulations. And, you know, he became world champ up there and with uh, WWE, and I became world champ with WCW, and the rest is history. Then in the end, you know, he, was, he finally got back with WWE and kind of made amends with everybody. And... And I was looking forward to coming back and being a part of WWE and reconnecting with Jim and maybe even doing some stuff on the road with him. And, you know, the rest is history. Bummer. You guys are two of the coolest guys in wrestling. And I, I was wondering if when you watched him, do you think uh, he was doing some pretty cool stuff? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm proud of what he did. Hello. My question is a little bit towards Eric and yourself. Uh, controversy creates cash, I always believe that, and one of the most interesting things that came out after your book, Eric, was what happened with Jeff Hardy in the TNA match. I know it's a, he's redeemed himself since then, but what was the feeling and what, what, was, what was the said backstage after that incident? I'll, I'll give you my perspective, and, and I'm sure Singh has his. I, I, it was an awkward position because it was live, <clears throat> and we knew we couldn't edit it. There was no way to fix it. Um, it was pretty apparent when Jeff made his way out to the ring that he was a wreck. We didn't really realize how badly wrecked he was until he got to the ring, and then it was a question of what do we do. And to be really honest, um, the two things I thought of, because I was a character in TNA, and I was kind of like the abusive boss, you know, it would have been okay for my character as the boss to go out and do something drastic, and the thought went through my mind to just go out and knock him out, for real. And that's not tough guy talking, because number one, I'm not, and number two, a six-year-old kid could have knocked him out at that moment. So it was just a creative way of just putting an end to it and going off the air and then figuring out what to do with it after the fact, creatively. Um, but I just couldn't get myself to do that. Um, but it went through my mind about halfway through the ring. It was, you know, I was debating it. Uh, and it was a sheer disappointment. And to be honest, disgust. I was really disgusted, A, with myself, because he walked right by me and I could have stopped it, and I didn't. And I was angry at myself. I was probably as angry at myself as I was at him. No, that's not true. But it was close. Um, but since that time, you know, Jeff Hardy's one of the guys who I have some of the most respect for in the industry because he owned it, he turned his life around, he became a better human being because of it, and I think in many, in many ways I respect Jeff as much or more than I respect anybody because of that very incident. Thank you. Sting? Yeah, it was a, a tough deal because, you know, he was slowly deteriorating as the, as the day went by, and like Eric said, you, you didn't know how bad it was until you got into the ring, and um, it was... Not good. Not good for wrestling, not good for the fans, um, not good for Jeff, not good for anybody. And uh, just kind of a, a shame. And uh, the rest is history on how we ended the match. But, you know, I, I do want to, just like Eric did, just say, thankfully, he owned it and he turned everything around. And from what I understand, he's, he's still doing great. So, and I respect him. Thank you very much. How you doing, gentlemen? Good. good. Nice to meet you guys. Um, question for you. I'm from Eric's part of the country, Minneapolis. Um, which of the, these two Minnesota guys would you call a better worker, Rick Rude or Kurt Henning? Wow. I, man, they were both fantastic, but I think I'd have to go with Rick. And I, and I say Rick because not only did he have really good work ethic in the ring, he was really good in the ring, uh, great, great stamina, but he was good at playing his role. Yep. I mean, you, you know, back in those days, especially, babyface, heel. There was no gray. Babyface, heel. And Rick didn't try to be a babyface. He, 
He wasn't a heel that wanted to be a baby face. He was a heel that wanted to be a heel. And he was really good at it. I you loved guys, working with him. You guys had some great matches, absolutely. We did. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. You know, I was her first crush. He was. He was she my told first me that, crush. She told me that earlier today. It made me feel so good. Um, gosh, now I forgot. Okay. So. She said the same thing to me. <laughs> Damn it. So um, in, in the height of WCW, when um, everything was really big, I was only like seven years old, and my parents were constantly defending their decision to watch wrestling because it is violent, but I felt I learned a lot about loyalty, and it gave me a good opportunity, like I had earlier, to bond with my dad. What lessons did you guys learn, like, through your time as a wrestler? Like, what lessons did you learn through being a professional? Uh, one of the things I learned is, is, you know, to try to t treat everybody the way you'd like to be treated. And I'm not saying I treated everybody right, because I didn't, but I learned real quick that you know, the person that you mistreat one day could be the person that you work for the next. In this wrestling industry, that's the way it works. I mean, to be quite honest, Eric. Eric was a good, good example of that. Was he your first crush, too? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing later, Eric? I don't know, but we both like sushi. <laughs> oh, this is not turning out the way I thought it was going to turn out. <laughs> Talk about taking risks and stepping out of the box. Where were we? No, you, you were talking about... Oh, treating people well. Oh, yeah. What, what, what did I learn? Yeah, I mean, it's just... Eric, Eric was, was somebody who one day was... Well, I mean, how did you start? You, I, I got a call from Jim Hurd uh, to come in and audition because he wanted me to make Tony Schiavone and Jim Ross's life miserable. For some reason, he wanted me there to make them less secure in their job. That was, and he literally told me that. So I was the C squad announcer. I, like I batted cleanup for the guy that batted cleanup as an announcer. He uh, he showed up. I mean, this this Ken perfect Ken doll, you know, dark hair, about as handsome as they come, Mr. GQ, and you know, just prim and pro proper with that microphone and putting it in my face and all the other wrestlers. And I thought, who who is this? Why is he interviewing us? I mean, he had so much heat from the beginning, and he didn't do anything wrong. He just had heat from the beginning. You know, but he's a classic example because he ended up running the company. He ended up being, I mean, second in command under Ted Turner, pretty much, you know. So. What about you, Eric? You know, I probably, it all happened to me so fast, to be really honest about it. Um, it, it it's, I never really caught up to the position I was in. And I think I've learned more now, after the fact, than I really did then. Because I was, it was like being in a... It was like being in a marathon, but it was a sprint pace for me. And now looking back, um, if I had it to do all over again, in terms of taking away what I wish I would have learned at the time, was to be more patient with people and to be more open-minded. Um, not that I wasn't open-minded. Sometimes I was too open-minded. And I listened to too many people. And I tried to balance everybody's input and try to make the best out of it that I could. And that's not always the right decision either. But in general, I think I've learned to be more patient and be more open-minded. Thank you guys very much. Hey guys, welcome to Phoenix. Thing I just want to say, man, that I've been holding into this, you know, for 18 years. And I'm big, a big fan of yours over 20, so thank you for taking the time and coming to Phoenix. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. <laughs> Now That's one question. of my favorite collection of, of oh, yeah, action man. figures right there. I love it, you know, of so all time. I'm very happy to hear you were coming to town. So now my question is, you had a long and exciting career. Where do you see it joining the NWO the, on the Wolf Pack on your career? I don't understand. So it's been a long and exciting career. Yes. You know, when you joined the NWO, how did it go? How do you feel? You know, what was the experience through that? Oh, when I joined the NWO? Yeah. Like, how did that rate? If you look back at your career now, how would you rate that time joining the NWO compared to the rest of your career? Thank you, Eric. Oh, I mean, that, that, has to be, that has to be tops. I mean, it's... It, <laughs> I mean, to this day, you, you can see NWO t-shirts like that. Yeah. Or black and white that are original, they're all faded out, but people wear those things still to this day. You'll see them just out of the blue. And not at an event like this, not at a wrestling event, but just walking through an airport. You randomly see somebody. That'd be or, me. <laughs> hey, yeah, would, okay. So, that, I mean, that was just probably tops. 
Yeah. I remember the time you, you in, I think it was Orlando, you had done the, the video with Hall and Nash, that real grainy, you know, Sting, you got to come and check this out, you know, and I came and looked at that video and I went, wow, I mean, that, that was really, really, that was cool, that was cutting edge, and I wanted to be a part of that, you know. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, bud. Listen, we're going to wrap up here just in a little bit. We've got a few more minutes, and we're live on Facebook, and we've got some Facebook questions here, so let's close it up with this one. This is a really good one. If you could have any other wrestler's career, whose would it be? I can't, I can't even think that way. I, I really can't. I, I wouldn't want anyone else's career. I only want Sting's career. I just want to be me. All right? And that's a good answer, by the way. Clearly. What's your advice to someone hoping to break into the wrestling business today? One of the biggest things that I like to tell people just starting out, male or female, is be quick to listen, slow to speak. Um, don't, don't always speak your opinion or tell everybody how you think it should go, finishes or moves or whatever. Just listen. I mean, first you've got to develop a respect for the business. So, that's Great it. answer. So, I just want to tell you, it's a pleasure for me to be out here with you. We've known each other for now probably 25 or more years, and we've seen a lot and done a lot, but it's, I'm grateful, truly grateful for the opportunity to be out here and talk to the fans, talk to you, and just share a stage with you one more time. Wow. Yeah, it's been awesome, Eric. Yeah, you know what? I, I got to say, you know, I've, I've, you've heard me talk about Eric in the past, but Eric, in the beginning, when he said he didn't like, look at all kinds of different opinions... He wasn't looking at all kinds of different opinions. He was looking for your opinion. He, I'll never forget this. He was brand new. He had just taken over. He was running the company. And he was up in the rafters in the nosebleed sections at all of these events that we were doing. And he was listening to all you people. And he was talking to you people. You didn't know who he was. <laughs> he was talking to you. Yeah. And he was, he was asking questions and he was listening to the responses. And and so he, he kind of formulated, you know, which direction he was going to go based on what you all were telling him. And that was one of the greatest um, attributes about Eric in the beginning. And um, so, so good that, um, you know, the rest is history. It was awesome. We, we had a great working relationship all those years. Great, great way of uh, communicating. And, and uh, it, I honestly, I'm telling you, it was because of his leadership that we ended up launching the Monday Nitro the way we did. And that all the pay-per-views and the buy rates and everything that happened, all the money that was coming into Ted Turner's house, it, it was, honestly, it was because of Eric. He took a direction that no other suit and tie ever did. It's because he wasn't really a suit and tie. So, okay, enough mushy-mushy stuff. No it, it was awesome. It was awesome having Eric way back then. And it's awesome to be here. Thank each and every one of you guys for coming out. Thank you very much. Thank you.